Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and it seems like it's been a long time since we did a uh, full PGA uh, preview show. I guess because of the uh, uh, the Tour Championship being such a short field, we didn't do anything in, in full, and Bobby was out or whatever, but uh, Bobby is out again, but I am going to be doing a breakdown, at least of the tiers, for uh, tomorrow's uh, PGA Fortnite Championship. I'm also going to give a little bit of a look, I guess, at FanDuel. Um, and just so you guys know, at the request of a couple of members, I did put some Yahoo sheets up. It's having a, a little bit of trouble mapping on the site. Um, just kind of bear with us on that. Um, but, but I do agree that it, it is probably some low-hanging fruit in the Yahoo uh, streets. So uh, I'm probably going to play all three sites uh, tonight, tomorrow, whatever. And... I guess without any further ado, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll get right into it. It's probably going to be, uh, you know, I, I would imagine a, a higher scoring, um, lower scoring. Uh, uh, they're going to score pretty well in, in this uh, event. It's kind of a resort course. So those types of courses, they usually, they usually beat to death, uh, so to speak. Um, it's also relatively short being a resort course. So you don't really need to, uh, to bomb the ball, although, you know, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Being able to hit the ball far, it's always, it always helps. Um, so don't, I would not play guys just because they're short hitters, if that makes any sense. Uh, nonetheless, uh, let's take a look at the ranges here. We're going to do it the way we always do it. And then I'm going to, you know, highlight a couple of, I guess I consider lower owned hoodoos along the way. And then we're going to play that little game where we, uh, where I pick the top guys from each tier and Give you a couple of more nuggets to kind of work with. So at the top, you have four guys in the 10K range. And I like three of them. Uh, three of them kind of stand out as decent as decent plays. And the other one doesn't, I don't really like at all. Um, the one I don't like at all is Stigala. Um, he's just not rating to be a strong play. I guess that's the best way I can describe it. I can get into all the details. I do think that he's just being priced up here. I'm not actually sure why. I mean, he's still kind of an up-and-coming second, really second-tier golfer, and he's being just regarded as just a little bit better than these guys that really for no reason, and his and the underlying data supports that, um, which is why he's just not going to project well given his price. So uh, and I'm looking at his ownership. He's, uh, he's projecting at a pretty high 15%. So I think this is uh, definitely the fate of these guys. Now, these are the other three that are in this range, uh, Connors, Homa, and, and Hideki, they all are going to, you know, they're showing to be highly owned anywhere between 20 and 30 percent. But at least their their underlying data and metrics support it, you know. Um, so I, I do like Connors, Homa, and Hideki as as good, you know, pretty, pretty fair values here. Um, and while their ownership is high, I, I would I would not I would not try to fade them per se, you know, like there have been slates where I would say, okay, I don't need any 10 K guys. I'm not saying you hundred percent need the 10 K guys, but I, I, if you, if you build lineups and you get to them, I think it's fine. Um, as I, as a matter of fact, I do believe that when you do run lineups, you are going to end up with at least one of these guys in your lineups. It's just the way it's going to be. Now, as you go down to the, to the nine K range, um, you have, what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six guys here. And then quite honestly, I think five of those rate to be good plays too, you know? Um, and I'll highlight the, the ownership on all of them and, and the one I don't like. I just think Hoagie's kind of a significant cut below these guys. I think that he is, I, I'm probably going to end up with zero of him. And he's, he's not going to be unowned either. He's going to be like 12%. I just think he's just kind of mispriced in this tier. So I'm not going to be playing him. The other four guys um, I have as pretty good plays. I have two of them being much lower owned than the others. So let's just go over them. And so we have Pendrith, Davis, and Riley, um, and McNeely. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? So of all... Actually, I have uh, five of those six. I kind of so I like Pendrith, Riley, Davis, McNeely, and Grillo. I think all of those are fine. 
But but the two that are the lowest owned of those are actually Riley and Grillo. And I don't have them rated particularly lower than the other ones, if you want to know the truth. Um, so for me, if I had to pick which of these 9K guys I would, I would play at GPPs, I would err on the side of Grillo and Riley as opposed to Hendrith, Davis, and McNeely. Even though all three of those are very, very strong plays, um, I just think the ownership discount is, is not to be ignored. As a matter of fact, McNeely is actually not as bad. McNeely is actually closer to the lower owned Riley than to the higher owned guys. So maybe I would put McNeely in that, in that tier as well. But I definitely think Riley is, is very, very strong. I think, I think given ownership and given everything like that, I would say that he's probably my favorite of this top range of this nine uh, K range. Um, Pendrith rates the best, but he's the highest owned. But I have Riley just below him, and he's significantly lower home. And that's just the way you play GPPs in general. So, again, Riley, probably number one in this range, all things being considered. And then Grillo, I think, would be um, – he, Grillo does rank lower than these guys. So maybe Grillo is, is more fairly owned. Um, so I would say Riley is the under-owned. I would say that mm, – well, Hoagie is the is the is the no play, and then I think the others are kind of fair. So I think Riley would be the would be the the main guy from this range to make sure you got in GPP. So let's 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 keep a, a running track of this. So top ten K guy, I think they were all very similar. So who's the lowest known? I have Connors actually as the top overall play and lower owned than Homa, for example. So let's put Connors in as the top ten K. And we'll just kind of just go along. Okay, moving down the list, uh, the 8Ks. Um, first, let's get a sense of how many there are. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8, 10, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 8K guys. And does anybody stand out? Well, Let's start from the bottom, like the guys I like the least. Like Thomas Dietrich is not showing up as particularly great. You have uh, Dennis McCarthy, not particularly great. I mean, these are they're fine, but I mean they're at the top, you know, half of values. But but that might not be good enough. Mullinax, not that great. Clark, not that great. The guy who's interesting is the Webb Simpson. Um, I mean, he in a field like this used to be like a 10K and chalk. And now, I mean, he's only 8,400. He's showing up as almost a top 20 value and I'm showing him at 7% ownership. So that's actually somewhat interesting. Justin Sull looks okay. He looks better than these other guys and he's 11%. The top rated guy I have, and this is really annoying to me so let's just let's get to these my top rated 8k guy is someone i hate playing and and that is alex north and not only is he the top rated guy of my 8ks but he's one of the lower owned i have him only at seven percent and unfortunately i can't i can't let that go you know what i mean i can't i can't ignore that um my second highest, oh, my, my second highest rated guy is a guy named Taylor Montgomery. And he is more like 11% owned. Um, so Norrin, this is what, what, what I'm faced with. They have Norrin, who I don't like playing, but he's just standing out so strongly. Um, under Taylor Montgomery, the next guy I have is Brandon Steele and, basically, and Troy Merritt. I mean, the two of them are pretty equal, and they're both about 9%. And then you go down to Gary Woodland, who is a flat 8K and only 8%. The guy that I think is the, is the fade given ownership is Justin Su. Um, just because, again, like he rates like below these other guys at, at, that I mentioned. And I, he's double digit owned. So this is what you do. And this is, this is what I do, at least, especially when you're hand building. And you hand, hand building GPP lineups is kind of, it's not easy, but, 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 but this is the way I, I kind of handle it. 
So I would start with probably crossing out Hug, making sure I played Norin, and then really insisting on single digit own ownership, you know. Brendan Steele, nine percent. It's almost almost close to unplayable when you think about it. Then Woodland at eight. But when you're you're just trying to distinguish an eight percent and nine percent guy, you're you're really like putting a lot of pressure on yourself to be right with your ownership projections. And then there's Webb Simpson at eight, you know. So I think that you could sprinkle all those sub ten percent guys I mentioned. Um but I do have Norin as slightly the best. I mean, just 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 to say what it is. But I think that if you're building 20 lineups or whatever it is, I think you you don't need to take the big stand. Um because you all you have to be all you have to be is wrong on ownership by like four percentage points. It's not that hard. Um and then you're you made the wrong decision as far as who to take your stand on. So I would try to sprinkle those guys. Let me just review them again. So be Norin. Montgomery, Steele, Merritt, Woodlands, and Webb Simpson. Okay. Those would be the 8K guys I would sprinkle, you know, uh, almost equal exposure to them. But I, right now, I would probably have Noren overweight just because of, you know, I do trust my ownership projections somewhat. So with, when we have a situation like this, we have all these, these 10K guys, I like three of the four, and then you have these 9K guys, and I like five of the six, and you have some sprinkles of the eight, you are going to need to play guys, I think, in the 7K range, you know? Um, and, and normally, when I run these builds, you get a couple that kind of stand out. It's not exactly like that, but... I'm going to start with this. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Boy, why do, do I want to, do I want to recommend eight guys? Yeah, why not? I will recommend eight guys. So let, let's talk about I think you have to, you know, when, when you, when you want to play these 10 Ks, you have to give yourself a good portfolio of seven K guys. But the one thing I will say is that none of them are, none of them are that chalky. And none of them are like 2% owned, which is why I, I do want to go through all of them. So at the top of my rankings is Taylor Moore. Um, and again, none of this is by too much. Um, and then after that, you have Christian Kirk. And then after that, I have Mark Hubbard. And then I have Nick Hardy. And then I have who I call bad attitude, Kevin Streelman. And then I have David Lipsky. So that's six. And I said two more, right? Then there would be Jason Day. And then there would be um there was was there two more? Yeah, two more, sorry. Smalley and Spence. So I think all, I guess one of those nine, I guess all nine of those 7K guys are just kind of hard to distinguish and you should shuffle those. Um, I, I guess the point of this is that you, know, you can't play everybody, obviously. So the, 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 the guys that are just going to drop for me are going to be the 6Ks. I, I just don't think I'm going to play any of them. I mean, I was able to come up with like eight pretty decent 7Ks, and the 10K guys are pretty good, as are the 9Ks. Um, and with no big 7K guy really standing out, I do think you have to shuffle those. So I think that it's the range that is just going to get zero for me is going to be the 6K range. But uh, just to throw it out there, I mean, my top-rated guy in the 6K range is going to be – well, you know what? I'll do that when I go over uh, my who makes the cut thing. No, I'll just tell you. It's, 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 it would be Austin Smotherman. I don't think you're going to need to get to the 6K range. I don't think I want to get to the 6K range. Um, so this is just for the purposes of delivering content. <laughs> That's the best I can describe this. Um, I really don't like anybody in here, but if I had to pick one, it would be Austin Smotherman. And I'll tell you this, when you do run 
like a whole bunch of saber sim builds, you are gonna get you just get a lot of six K guys. Um, so just just go with whatever they tell you. You want to the truth. Um, uh, if if you're gonna run a saber sim build, I just I just can't project them well. I, I'm just not you know I, I just I'm never able to do that. So you can embrace the variance and get saber sim to or, or an optimizer, or randomizer to to generate a couple of six Ks in case these ten K guys run one two three or whatever. But I think you should be good enough with these other mid range plays to you know, to be able to avoid that. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to go through the ranges again and I'll play this little, you know, prediction game. And what I like to do as, as a content listener is to focus on this part because I am going to give you probably my favorite place in the range um, without even realizing it. So what I like to do is first if it's, is, is question one, it's just who's going to win the golf tournament? I mean, just like that. And seems kind of silly but to, to pick a guy who's I don't think is one but uh, I am gonna go with Corey Thomas um, as the guy to win the tournament then where it says okay so I need a 9k guy to finish in the top five um, there's a lot of good options here um and while I do believe that Davis Riley is the best kind of you know leverage play I think that the most likely to come in the top five is probably going to be Cameron Davis. So I would say Cam Davis is most likely to come in top five, but make no mistake. I do think Davis Riley is still the best leverage play in that, in that range. All right. 8k top 8k guy to make the top 10. This is tough. I'm going to go with. Um, crap. I, I guess I got to go with Webb. Are you most likely to make the top 10? I would say Webb. Because I know that he can if he plays well. And I don't even know if Alex Norris can do it, you know? Um, so I will go with, I guess, with Webb Simpson. Uh, top 7K guy to make the top 20? I'll go with my top graded. Well, it's either going to be Moore or Kirk. Uh, well, you know, I'll, I'll trust my projections. I'll go with, uh, I'll go with Taylor Moore. And then 6K guy to make the con, I may as well just go with, with, with some other names. Like top, top um, um, so that's pretty much all I have for, for this. No, you know what? That's not true. I apologize. Let me look at, uh, at FanDuel. And let me just see if there's anything really different. Um, yeah, you know what I see? I see Troy Merritt showing up a little higher over here at low ownership. So that's something. What you'll find, though, at FanDuel is that it is kind of stars and scrubsy, so you are going to play these 11Ks. Um, so it's not too much different. I, that's that's the one difference, I guess, is that Troy Merritt would be a little bit, you know, you can get some leverage on him. Alex Noren's showing up over there as well, so I don't know why they really are interested in Alex Noren this week, all my models, but they are. That's what I can tell, I can tell you. Um, so that'll do it. Good luck in the in, on the slate. And um, yeah, that's it.